time to be doing that bullshit. bullshit, bullshit. Actually, you know, let's start with Overwatch 2. Can we do that? What is this podcast sure. becoming? I see. I feel like I need to split the podcast up. I need. I feel like I need, it needs. It needs to be like current events and then nerd shit because they do touch. But but I feel like sometimes some episodes are about one thing and you know whatever. I I crowd can handle it. Um, <clears throat> Overwatch 2 is awesome. I, I I'm okay. Let me let me rephrase that. Overwatch 2 is just Overwatch 1 with all the things that I hated about it gone. Almost all the things. And it's funny because I usually, you know me, I am no Blizzard shill. Okay? I I tore Blizzard ass up with the Diablo shit. The Diablo Mm -hmm. uh, mobile. Mm -hmm. Um, Overwatch 2, the main complaints I hear about is is, is about the monetization of Overwatch 2, but but the the truth is, over the way Overwatch One was set up, um, there was no way the game could survive because it wasn't making any money, which is why the content was so slow and all this other stuff. So you know, it, the game has to, it has to be monetized somehow, mm-hmm. and you know, I don't know if this is the perfect way or whatever. I like the way it is now better than the loot box shit. It's like I see something mm-hmm. I want, I can buy it. Directly, not none of this. You get a chance to buy some shit. Like I, I, you know, you get it. You can buy the chance to get some shit. I don't like that. This the shit, gotcha, uh, gotcha boxes. Right, right. This shit is like, yo, if you see something you want, you, it's five dollars. You know what I mean? I like that. You know, and so, um, and I feel like that's a way to a better way to have the game be sustainable to get content more often, so on and so forth. And so other people are complaining that, hey, it's not a sequel, it's just an update. Because the whole single player or, or PvE experience that they advertise is is um, is um uh, is is not there anymore. Since Jeff Kaplan left, I don't know if there was some kind of controversy. But it's, really, it's basically just Overwatch 1 with some extra levels, some extra characters, some better graphics, and more fun gameplay. Which is, all, which is fine with me. It's free. It's a free upgrade, so I don't know. I don't. I don't see the controversy there, and I, I just. I've been playing a lot of it, and you know that that's that's Blizzard though. They gonna get you. They gonna get you. Cause same thing when Diablo, when Diablo four come out, I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna give it mm-hmm. a whirl. Yeah, Diablo Immortal was egregious, evil, and underhanded, but I think Blizzard has built up enough goodwill. Because it's it's not just Blizzard, it's Blizzard slash Activision, and I feel like Activision is most is where most of the evil comes from. That, that's just me, but but also Microsoft is trying to buy them, correct? Yeah. And I think um, Sony is against that because they don't want to lose Call of Duty. I mean, they're framing it as though they want to protect consumers, so consumers have more choices to play games on whatever console, you know. Which is which is that 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 can't possibly this is in the UK they're suing but that can't possibly hold water because they they participated in the console exclusives and all of that sort of thing so I, I don't think their argument has a leg to stand on but man if Microsoft bought Blizzard and re, you know I think that might be a good thing for gaming who knows because Microsoft unlike Google doesn't tend to just give up on shit you know what I mean Microsoft will stick R- with some R. I. P. shit Stadia yeah, Microsoft will stick with some shit until until one person's using it. Look how long they stuck with Internet Explorer. They will not quit on Edge. Edge got like half a percent of the browser market. They just keep on every time I turn on my computer. Hey, Edge is Edge is pretty cool. They it's pretty cool. It's like, "All right, well, I'm good though." <laughs> you know, but they ask me, they keep asking me and and Hey, Google, Ed, Edge Edge is the number one choice to download another browser. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we and we know, we know. And and um um I lost my train of thought. Man, I keep I've been doing that a lot lately. Um You were talking about Activision uh being bought by Microsoft and Microsoft uh sticks with its products unlike Google. Oh, unlike Google St- unlike Stadia. Then listen, I don't know if y'all were listening to the podcast back when Stadia first came out. And uh, and uh, did we talk about this last week? Mm-mm. Okay. Well, so back when Stadia first came out, 
um, you know, my I said, don't don't do it. Do not sign up for Stadia. Don't buy nothing from because you can't trust Google to listen. You can't trust Google to stick with anything where they can't collect data from you, like large amounts of data. And what they what they were calling the future of gaming, and they're right. By the way, Google is correct. Sh- streaming gaming is the future of gaming, but not from them. You can't count on Google to stick by nothing. And I'm telling you, I like I've said a thousand times, I've been with Google from pretty much the get go since Gmail was in beta. I've been with Google. I have a I, my Gmail account was a beta a Gmail account. So that's how long ago it was. I had a G1, the first uh, Android phone from Google. I had a G, I've been with them. I've been right, and I, there's a graveyard of messaging apps and all kind of shit that I've been a, a guinea pig for that I got integrated into my life, and then they just went the fuck away. I loved Inbox when Inbox came out. They got rid of it. Google Buzz. Um, um, I think Hangouts is, used to be. Uh, a different thing. You now it's meet because that's the thing. Google have they'll have three or four programs that do the same thing, and then it, they like fight, duke it out. And and here's the thing too. Google, listen, if you're if you're really trying to compete with Apple, that ain't it. If it's one thing Apple is shitting on y'all with, it's the it's the it's the consistency. It's like Apple don't have half ass shit that kind of sort of integrate with that, that it's going to go away in five years. To, and then there's three other programs that do this and do that. They don't, it's, it's not confusing at all. You know, you understand what I'm saying? It's like, nothing, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't remember anything. I, at least I don't know any Apple users that are like, oh shit, this is the fifth, you know, this is the fifth texting app they've had. It's like, you know, Google somehow like sometimes they just half ass certain things and I don't I don't get it. Like the Pixel Watch. The Pixel 7 Pro just came out. Um, or just was just was announced. I pre ordered mine. Um and the Pixel 7 Pro is a is an upgrade on the Pixel 6. It fixes some of the problems with the Pixel 6. They settle with a shitty fingerprint reader. And the Pixel Watch just came out. And don't get that. Don't get it. They got they have <laughs> They have a day of battery life. Come on, man. You're, you're supposedly competing with Apple. There's no smartwatch now that has that little bit of battery life. None of the mainstream people. The Samsung, the Apple, neither one. So why would you come out with your first joint out the bat? You, you're trying to give it your best shot. And, and, and the key area, you half-ass. It doesn't make sense. I don't want to charge my watch every day. Or I don't want to choose between my watch doing all its measuring while I'm asleep or while I'm awake. Cause, cause, cause at some point you're gonna have to make that, make that compromise. So it's, it's weird to me that they would, they, someone at Google is obsessed with half-ass and shit. Like somebody comes in there with a good idea and they go, uh, okay, but look, can we, uh, can we use cheaper glass? <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey, look, how, can't we save a thousand dollars if we, if we put smaller batteries in a million phones? Like that, that's how they think. Somebody over there is fucking up the game. They, it's too many cooks in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I guess that's my little my, tech. My, my understanding is also that within the corporate culture at Google, the engineers that get put on these projects, you get credit for launching the project, but then you're supposed to use that to launch yourself to the next strata and you start a bigger project. So they they put all their best engineers on the innovation side of their products. And then as soon as they're launched, they move those the best engineers onto new projects and they bring in the B squad, the junior varsity. That makes a thousand percent sense. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That that's exactly what it feels like. Yeah. It, or sometimes sometimes Google will they will they'll release some shit and and you're like, you ever use some shit and you're like, do the people that made this use this? Cause like <laughs> some of the stuff they overlook we like, how do you not know that this is an issue? It, cause it, it, bro, it took like five years for Google Maps to give you turn directions well ahead of time, like a per, mm-hmm. like a person would, right? And it was something everyone was complaining about forever. Where it was like, where, 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 I'm, where basically I'm, what I'm talking about is like, say you, uh, say you, you make a you make a left turn, and the next turn you have to make is a right turn, and it and it's coming up quick, right? Mm-hmm. Google Maps for like the first five or six years would go, 
you know, make a left turn in 200 feet. And then you would make that left turn, and now now your right turn is in 300 feet. But they won't tell you till you get 200 feet away. So you might have turned left right. into the left lane, and now you can't make your right turn. Whereas now, finally, they go, make a left turn in 200 feet, then make a right turn. So now you know it's a right turn coming up. So you know to turn into the right, the turning lane. You know what I'm saying? Or get right. into the lane. So it's like stuff like that, where it's like, if you, and if you use Google Maps, it would immediately be apparent that that's the issue. But- yeah. You know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a lot of they people in San Francisco, they catch the train. Who knows? Um, Keeping it with the theme, uh, the headline, Elon Musk's texts shattered the myth, the tech genius, the myth of the tech genius. This is an article from The Atlantic. Um, What does that even mean? Yesterday, the world got a look inside Elon Musk's phone. How did that happen? The Tesla and SpaceX CEO is currently in litigation with Twitter and trying to back out of his deal to buy the platform and take it private. As part of the discovery process related to this lawsuit, Delaware's Court of Chancery released hundreds of text messages and emails sent to and from Musk. Um, The 151-page redacted document is a remarkable voyeuristic record of a few months in the life of the world's richest and most overexposed man and a rare, unvarnished glimpse into the overlapping worlds of Silicon Valley. Okay, well, listen, first of all... um, I can tell you right now, I know Elon Musk can't be that much of a genius because everybody knows his name. The pro, the, he's too, he's, he's, you, can, you, listen, when you get into billion dollar range, you need to be as disappeared as humanly possible. This is what you got to give to Jeff Bezos. I don't know where that motherfucker was yesterday. I don't even think he has a Twitter or a Facebook or any of that. You only hear about Jeff Bezos on articles and shit. He don't be talking. You, because when you that when you that rich man, motherfuckers can't be knowing your moves and and your state of mind and all that. And, and not only that, but it's like your words affect. Your words move billions. They make they affect things. So you you have to be very careful and very measured in what you say and when, right? So the smart rich people don't. They are they are at least they are they are the least in the public as possible. Plus, when it's when it's time to eat the rich, we don't know most of their names. We know Elon. We know we know Bezos, mm-hmm. we know Zuckerberg, we know Bill Gates, we know Norman. I mean, uh, like you know, what I'm saying we would name like ten. We, right. We can name like ten. Like I bet. Listen, I put it like this: If I walk into the average crowd of white people, they probably be able to name more black historical figures than billionaires. These are both short lists. Those are both short lists that they could name. Yeah, for sure. But what I'm saying is the, the people with the smart money, you don't know who they are. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? Or at least maybe you know who they are, but you say their name or something to a random person, and they'd be like, who? So, so you know, the fact that he talks so fucking much already lets you know that, like, he... Look, I put it like this. There's levels to genius, or there's different kinds of genius. So you can maybe you can still think of him as a genius, but but that don't mean he ain't stupid with other shit. You know, just like Trump, Trump might be a billionaire, or so he claims, but you know, you don't you don't see billionaires running for president. You know why? Because it's fucking stupid. He went from being he went from being beloved at the most and tolerated at the least to fucking despised by some people and worshipped by others. Nobody wants that. You know, that's that's bad for business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because. You know, the people that love you are all old and dying and not, don't have that much money. <laughs> so, you know, I, how long can how long is that sustainable? I don't know. So who, if you're smart, you don't want to win the jackpot. You want to own the casino. It, precisely. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say. You want to be the owner. You want to be the owner. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be you don't want to be you don't want to be a player. You want to be an owner. And so, you know, every politician is a player. That's all it is. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I, but I don't understand. Did they release more text? Did they release texts that were outside the scope of the investigation? How do we? How does this? No, in- no. They're they're um, the short version of this is basically uh, the texts are evidence that he was um, of like what his state of mind was when he and what his intentions were behind making the offer to buy Twitter and. The interesting or funny part about the text is it's mostly, 
you know, dot com billionaires and that kind of crap and CEOs who are sending Elon to his personal number some of the most dog shit ideas for how to fix Twitter. You know, and and the the description of it as like billionaire fantasy baseball, right? And the uh, and, and that there's these they they're supposed to be these super geniuses who understand how business and media works and they have these terrible uh these terrible uh suggestions. Well, I guess I guess Elon. I guess the whether the suggestions are terrible or not are completely dependent on um what you what you what you see in your head when you say fix Twitter. Right? What 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 is mm-hmm. what is Twitter being fixed look like? I don't even know. I mean different different people have different ideas of what it is, but I think I think the average person has this notion that these uh tech billionaires are extremely Extremely intelligent, extremely rational, extremely data driven, and mm. the text messages can quickly disabuse you of those notions because you see, like, oh, they're just they're just talking shit like some random guy down at the bar or like somebody that you would meet at an airport. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. not they're not these gods among men that have seen through the veil into the way that the world really works or anything like that. You you know what he could do to just to just just fucking absolute chaos is just <laughs> just reset it just <laughs> mm-hmm. just delete everything that's on there except the accounts like let everybody keep the accounts but every tweet never tweeted is gone mm. pull a thanos um, just evaporate 50 percent of all the accounts oh man dude that that At would random uh, that would be probably very very damaging to society but it would be hilarious for a few days <laughs> but I mean the this the this the psychological and emotional toll that would take on people is is out of this world. Um this is a headline that I barely understood. Um oh wait a minute. Ca- council comes under fire for replacing storytelling library bear with gender neutral alien. Oh my god. This is from the Daily Mail. Well, you know how we feel about them. Um Hertfordshire, hold on. Is that how you say it? Hertfordshire? Hertfordshire? I think it's Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire Council has introduced, uh, by the way, I'm going to London, mates. Next week, mates. I'll be there with Joe Rogan, Hans Kim, and the Golden Pony, Tony Hinchcliffe at O2 Arena. Get your tickets at JoeRogan.com. The council hopes... uh, Tala will encourage more families to visit its libraries, but some have slammed the council saying the children are too young for them. The council says any suggestion Tala is being used to push any ideology is false. Okay, so a council has come under fire after it replaced its library story time telling Bear with a gender neutral rainbow alien that is neither female nor male after campaigners incorrectly claimed the alien was trans and the policy was an effort to push gender ideology. Hurt for sure, Council says, Tala the Storyteller is a bright, vibrant creature that will capture the imagination of toddlers and babies and confirm they will be referred to use <laughs> using they, them pronouns. Tala is a new mascot for a series aimed at babies and toddlers and will also take cover take over from Bookstart Bear at reading events for kids. At the, I mean, I don't... Oh, that's, that's an adorable bear. I mean, what do they want? Do they want to dick on this alien? Is that what they're saying? <laughs> they want to know what's in the alien's pants. Give this alien, give this book reading alien a pussy, goddamn it! I demand it. <laughs> I want to see pussy lips on this alien stat. The things that you can get people to get riled up about. Who gives a fuck what the gender? I mean, because the here's the thing, guys. The original bear doesn't have a dick. See, if you put a dick on that bear, these same people will have a problem with it. <laughs> if that bear was just walking around with a big old dick reading books, people were like, yo, I just want to make sure everybody knows this is a man. It's a male bear. <laughs> nope, that's because, see, this is, this, is, this is my problem. Again, guys, you know my policy. You free to think whatever you want to think. And I, I will have a conversation with anyone, whether we agree or don't agree. But here's the thing. You have to be intellectually consistent. You, if you, if you one of these people that that you you change how the wind blow or you change up uh, your 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 arguments and the basis for your arguments, you know, depending on what outcome you'd like, 
I can't fuck with you. I'm not going to respect what you have to say because see, th these people are trying to make this about um, gender politics and all this other stuff, but that's not really what it's about, is it? They don't understand transness and they, it scares them. That's what the, That's the truth. And they try to make it about all this other stuff. But you never cared about the gender of the bear till you thought the bear was trans. You, you never cared about the gender of the storytelling creature till you thought it was trans. <laughs> yeah. You never saw that bear's dick or pussy. I don't know which gen what, which, what, what the bear identified as. Also, the bear ain't really re it's a, It's a mascot, my guy. It's a mascot for children. You know how many children's things have ne have ne didn't have a, 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 a gender? I mean, I've never seen Ronald McDonald's dick or Grimace, for that matter. I guess that's, maybe that's not a good example. I think Grimace is a perfect example, actually. I mean, I guess yeah. Grimace is technically, I guess they use he pronouns with him or whatever, but, like, it's it, it, with Ronald McDonald, it's like, okay, well, he, he's usually played by a dude, and Ronald is generally a dude's name, so whatever. Ronald McDonald probably has a dick. Oh, what, about the, what, about the, what about the headless guy from Power Rangers? What, what, what about him? Zor Zorion? Z Zordon? 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 Yeah, I mean that's a floating head, my guy, and he's he's got a deep masculine voice, but no dick, no body. Unless 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 you're telling me like his his genitals are on the astral plane, somebody somebody he's just got a <laughs> he's just got a celestial dick that's in another dimension. <laughs> is that it? But is that important? I don't to know. These people, it is. Yeah, because I mean, what what sort of agenda? Because that's another thing. I, that's a that's a big word. What's, what is the agenda? What do you think the agenda is? Do you think people want you think they want everybody to be gay, or you think they just want everybody to look at gay, trans, and 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 LGBTQ people as just people that that didn't choose anything. That's just that's just they just exist. Because I think I think at the bottom of it, that's what people want. Now, don't get me wrong. There's crazy people in every community, especially amongst the activists. That always want to go a little too a little step too far, you know. But you can't. That that is those are not the thoughts, feelings, and actions of the vast majority. Most people just want to be left the fuck alone. They want you to mind your fucking business and leave them the fuck alone. You know, representation is important as well. It's like it's it's nice it's nice to look around and see somebody that looked like you in a position that you never thought you you could be in. That's important. That's important for kids to know that. To, to see around them themselves, to see themselves in the world. So, you know, and, I, and here's the other thing, too. I don't think any kid is going to see um, uh, an alien that's neither male nor female <laughs> and have any kind of uh, 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 agenda pushed upon them because kids don't think like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we didn't know the alien from aliens. We didn't know that was a female until we saw the eggs. It, it, is it important? That bitch still gonna bite your head off. <laughs> it's an alien, my guy. Why do you care? How, how do you know that? Because it, it, it's like, are there two genders in there in an alien piece? I don't know. Ugh, it's, it's the, the the sort of things people can be preoccupied with, right? Like this, like the Kanye West shit. Have you seen this recently? Like Kanye's like losing his mind again, and people are yeah. paying attention to him again. He's he's must have a new album coming out. Oh, you think Rob? You think that you think he's close to a new album coming out? You think so? It's like people don't see the pattern. People, they, it, it's every time. Listen, anything that comes from Hollywood, I just assume is fake until I see evidence to the contrary. Mm -hmm. Anything that comes from the from the you know the Grammys, the Emmys, the anything that's out of that, it, it look. It, you know, I take it with a grain of salt because it's not all fake, but it's mostly fake or mm -hmm. things are intended or whatever. I mean, I guarantee you. And listen, it might not even be him specifically. It may not be as as sinister. You know, it may not be as, as simple as, you know, he just starts saying crazy shit when he when he's off his when he's about to have an album coming out. But it might be like somebody on his team that, you know, switch his pills out with placebos when it's close to the album drop. If you think it ain't motherfuckers that evil, think again. Think again. Team T minus three weeks, we better start uh, letting them off the leash a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody gonna start, they need to start mixing that motherfucking um, lithium back up in his in his, in his his Cheerios or something. You know? <clears throat> but but it's, 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 it's weird too because he's putting his fans in a weird position. 
because <laughs> because because Kanye has a Kanye has a cult. He does. Yeah. He has a cult. Um, you know, th- th- there's his larger, wider fan base that respects his artistry and so on and so forth. But there's also people out there that will fucking punch you in your face over Kanye. That like they love him that much. He's he's got he's got a, a cult just like Beyonce, Nicki Minaj. These people they, they have like they have like a like a fan base, like the people that like live vicariously through them, and they take it very 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 seriously, right? And I I have a couple friends that are fucking I don't know what you call Kanye fans they don't really have a, a they don't have a nickname like the Beehive or the Barb's or whatever but they they act they act the same and 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 even those people I'm friends with a couple of them that will like literally like con- like when Kanye put out that joke song they still downloaded it and played it you know they anything he does they're gonna love it they're gonna they're gonna get it they're gonna love it they're gonna go to it they're gonna all that. Even those people um, are gonna have a hard time um, with the anti-Semitism and all of that shit. The anti-blackness, the anti-Semitism, that's gonna be a problem for, for a lot of them. Even though, you know what, but, but I think so. I don't know, I haven't talked to any of these motherfuckers yet. But, but I, I feel like it, it, he, it's beyond defending. At this point, you know, on or on or off your meds or not, it's like, what what are you supposed to do? How do, why we, why do we keep supporting the circumstances that allowed this to happen? You know what I mean? Because he puts out bangers. Because the thing is, because the thing is, acting like this hasn't cost him anything. Mm-hmm. You know, and you and you know just as well as I do is like when you enable behaviors like this, it's never going to change. So you can't say you have a you know. Cause I was and I was always in the camp of hey look he's a genius all I care about is the music, and I don't pay attention to the rest of the fuckery because that's just that's just the price of that. But now he's at the point where it's like I you know is the music even dope? Am I gonna listen to it? Maybe I get a little sneak peek. Right, I get a little sneak peek. But I've never been a huge Kanye person to begin with, so don't come for me, dog. I just I like what I like, and Kanye isn't. To me, you know, I'm not like everything he dropped. I gotta, I gotta hit the whole thing. I'm not, I'm not one of those people. Um, I, you know, and I'm, and I'm not at all questioning his talent. He's a very talented person. He's made some great shit, but it's like, why, do, why do we gotta hear what he gotta say? He's gonna run for president again. Yeah, they're saying. Well, I, I also, I also feel like the trolling and the culture war stuff with Kanye has outgrown his musical contributions. At this point, precisely, precisely. I, I hear, I hear more about him tweeting some bullshit than I do. Get than I get messages from people like, "Oh, you have to listen to this new Kanye West track." Exactly. And speaking of people that shouldn't be running for any kind of government office, um, <laughs> pro life Herschel Walker paid for girlfriend's abortion. Georgia Senate. Now, I think it was you, Rob, that sent me. Um, you sent me a video of a woman saying, like, she don't give a fuck. Like one of these um, crazy right-wing ladies that was like, she doesn't care that he had an abortion. She just wants to win. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. And that's how a lot of people, I t- and I've been telling you, that's how the right thinks. They don't give a fuck. See, see, the left thinks this is a bombshell. The right don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck if he violate everything. I mean, guys, come on. This guy is smart as a bag of hammers. That right there should tell you don't. It don't matter. Like if it mattered to if it if this mattered to them, they wouldn't be they wouldn't be letting this dude run. They're like yo, he can win. This crazy motherfucker win. Listen and again, Herschel Walker, one of the greatest running backs of all time, one of the most durable people um, to ever play uh, in the NFL. But and 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 maybe he maybe deep down underneath, like you know, like underneath all of this crazy shit, maybe he is a smart guy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he just down in the um, in the um, what, what the, what's that shit from Get Out? The Quiet Place? The uh, the sunken place. The sunken place. Maybe he just down in the sunken place, or something. Um, he's also he's he he he's got a, he's got a very very gay conservative son. He's very gay mm-hmm. and very conservative. Very popular on Twitter as well. That sort of spouts all the same stuff like that. But that boy is coherent at least. You know. Yeah. He's he's. 
<laughs> you should you should see Giannis Papas's <laughs> impression of this guy. But <laughs> but it but it, he made the good point of like it's funny to see it's funny to see the like the most right wing talking points come out of the most left wing voice. It's like the this guy has the gayest voice and is like hardcore conservative. Um, but but it's like but I'm sorry, man. Herschel Walker, look, I wouldn't let this motherfucker. I put, I put it like this: if I called the Uber and it pulled up and Herschel Walker was the driver, I would get out of that Uber. <laughs> I would not let this man do anything for me that of any importance. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. That's how much I I believe his intellect is diminished. So if you think the fact that he's having an abortion, even though he's pro life, if you think that's going to stop him from, or it's going to stop the support he gets from the right you you're you're lost in this game you're lost in this game being being right doesn't matter only power matters you know what i'm saying and it's it's wild to me that americans don't understand that even though we've all just inhaled everything game of thrones that's the lesson in that show mm-hmm. being right don't matter y'all see what happened to viserys and he he didn't realize that all the way till he fucking died What's right is irrelevant. It's who has the power. The Targaryens were, ain't, didn't run shit because they was right. They ran sh- his His brother understood that. He, what's, what's important is that we got dragons. That's why we running everything. Because nobody else, nobody else can match that. So it's, it's the same thing here. It's like con- the conservatives understand this is where they have us beat. Always. Is they can use more... They can use morality against us, and they don't apply it to themselves. Well, that's why, you know you know what I think was actually the most effective messaging against Trump when he was running, at least the first time, is that he's secretly liberal, that he's secretly yep. a Democrat. That's the only thing. That's the only time he gets pushback from his base is when he does something that is... Um, that is that is like a hardcore liberal principle, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't know. It depends on what it was. Like this here, I mean, I think having an abortion is having an abortion liberal. No, <laughs> no, it no. isn't. No, having an abortion is not liberal. That's a, that's 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 just American. American is apple pie, baby. <laughs> now letting poor people have abortions, that's liberal. So maybe, maybe you know if maybe if Herschel Walker had gotten his daughter an abortion, I don't know if he has a daughter, but just hypothetically, if he gotten his daughter an abortion, I don't think he knows if he has a daughter. Yeah, right. Or I mean, well, his son's pretty close. <laughs> his, I split it down True. in the middle. But he, but 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 you know maybe that would be controversial, or like if he was paying for liberals. If he was paying for people to like go get abortions, but the fact that he got one himself secretly—that's the most conservative shit ever. Right. Voting for people, voting for it to be illegal for everybody, and then going get one yourself—that's very, very, very conservative. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget the, the guy that uh that got in trouble for for uh for the underage girl that was running like the same time Trump was running, right? Or the or the midterm, Trump's midterm. You know what I'm talking about? Ooh. It was a, it was no. somebody it was I forget I forget all the details but there was a, there was a senator that got caught with an underage hooker or he was he was he was fucking an un, a, a, a teenage girl or something something to that degree and we thought it was Roy Moore Roy Moore and we thought it was gonna bring him down I mean that guy's kind of did but not really well I think I I think it can have an effect it's just the the left thinks that it's this one shot, one kill. Right. You know, they, they, the left. Oh, we got him. The left and it's like, that, well, maybe it peels off a little bit of your base. Maybe some people that were excited to vote for you aren't excited. And so if there's a line at the poll, they're just going to go home. Maybe it makes a difference, but it's not this all encompassing shift in the winds, you know? Absolutely not. The, the, the left thinks that it's going to have the same effect it would have on someone on the left. And it just, right. and it just won't, you know? It just won't, because ultimately, at the end of the day, like I said, the right, their number one concern is winning, and the left's number one concern is looking good. 
and they use that against us time and time and time again. Now, now maybe maybe left and right are too simplistic of terms, but I'm just talking about the two major parties, the the two sides. Yeah. The the con, con, Republicans care about winning first, and they don't give a fuck if everyone thinks that they're a stupid, dumb, fucking piece of shit at the end, as long as they win, because then they have the power to do what they want. That's what matters to them. The left wants to look good. They want to come out squeaky clean. And that's just a harder road to travel, which is why we lose a lot. And listen, and 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 this isn't something I'm making up. This has been the sort of the sort of little little jokey joke since before I was born. I, I used to hear adults talking about this when I was a little kid, how Democrats were pussies. You know what I mean? And and blah 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 blah. So so this isn't something that I'm just this is a conclusion I'm just coming to. It's just always been this way. You know, now politics are a lot cleaner than they used to be. Some people think, don't think so, but like, shit used to get real serious. We were motherfuckers would duel. <laughs> you know, I wish we would bring that back. Just bring back a duel or two. I think we should go full Game of Thrones with it. I want to see, I want to see Donald Trump Jr. in a, in a gladiatorial arena with yo Andrew that Biden. would be so it would be so dope if somebody that was real like a true badass would run like somebody that could really like that could really fight that would be cool that would be cool instead of these fucking tough talking fucking cunts I, I hate how i hate it when politicians talk about war like they the ones that's gonna fight it mm-hmm. we'll kick your ass no you won't you be honest We'll send some, we'll send mostly poor people's children to fucking <laughs> kick your ass. That's really what you're going to do. Okay, um, can we do some, should we do some emails before we go? Because I, because the, yeah. the, we're starting to get these at an alarming rate. Not alarming, but it, it, but it's just, I want to be able to read them all. Maybe, maybe what I need to do is like, I'll read as many as I can per episode and then once a month, I'll do an episode that's just emails, and so I can get to them all. How about that? Sure, that seems fair. Or maybe, or maybe make that a bonus episode, make it a Patreon episode or something. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, where I just do all emails. So I'm, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a couple if I can. I'll try to go back to. Um. Oh, what date was the last episode? September thirtieth. The last step. No, October fourth. October fourth. Yeah. Okay, but I have um, I have emails from before that that I don't think I read. Okay. All right, let's see here. From – okay, mm. this is from – maybe I read this already – this is going to be a long one. It says, hey, Brian, this is going to be a long one. My name is Ryan. I love the podcast and all the content I found on the internet. I'm a comic from Detroit, and I was on the 6 p.m. show at the Detroit House of Comedy. Your set was phenomenal. Hearing your material always sounds like a more approachable Patrice O'Neill, so it's not surprising that you liked him. I'm at a point in my life where I have to make a decision. I work in IT, making decent money, but I don't have any passion for the job. Lost about 120 pounds. Well, goddamn. Got divorced and did my first 45 minutes set all since January. My question is, do I quit my day job and try to make it in a bigger market, Austin, New York, LA, or Chicago? I have a couple connects in all of those places, or stay in Detroit and try to be a big fish, small pond, and make waves via the internet. Also, you never rated your top five comedy specials albums. How do you decide what material to focus on or how to or how to link somewhat opposing ideas like what to the King of England and it was insane. This clip of Patrice on ONA was kind of brought me to a crossroads in comedy in life. I know it's a pretty lonely lifestyle to lead full time and the money ain't great unless you're headlining regularly. Advice champ, I need a little magic. Um That's an that that uh you know so basically to, to he's saying should I should I stop my day job and do comedy full time? Um, and how do I know? How do I know when? Well, <clears throat> um, that's just the thing, man. There's no, there's no right answer to that question. You know, I, I, it, you know, because L.A., New York, Chicago, and very, very soon to be Austin are places where people go. Well, I mean, really, it's 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 L.A. and New York, and very soon to be Austin because that, that's where the industry is but th- 
that's where everyone that is talented eventually has to go. But that's also where everyone that thinks they're talented goes. And there's way more of them. And the challenge is tr- trying to f- trying to figure out which one you are. Um, and I, I think the only way to know that is is it, there has to be some some real deep introspection and self honesty, and some real honesty from the people around you, um, specifically people in your comedy community, and, and and other headliners and stuff like when people you know because. I put it like this. If you and people you real close to are the only ones telling you that you got it and you need to move, then you don't. Right? Because sometimes people support you by lying to you. They Because a lot of times people don't know if you need encouragement or need the truth. Right? But but if you open your eyes and you're, and you're, and you're perceptive and you have accurate, honest self-assessment, right? Because that's the key to everything. Accurate, honest self-assessment. That's that's the hardest part for every artist, for every person in every field. But you'll know, like it, you know, are other comics that come to town that see you that see your set, are they telling you, hey man, you need to get out of here? You know what I mean? Are are you know um and so it, it it's that sort of thing. Are you the big fish in the small pond already? That's another thing. You know, the so it, there's a lot of questions that you have to answer. There's no wrong answer. Um, and I'm guessing if you've been divorced, you're probably in your 30s. You know, so you have time. It's it's not, it's not, you know, that's just a tough question to answer. But but you'll know. You'll know. I mean, the, the your sense of timing is what makes you a comic. And you'll know when it's time. Just, you know, you just have to, you have to trust your instincts. And like I said, if you've been accurately honest self, self-assessing, then you'll get the right answer from yourself. Is that... Is that does that sound like a does that make sense to you? Yeah, that makes sense to me. And, and, I think go ahead. No, uh, I I think it's it's hard to know without some extra information about how old he is, what else is going on. Like he says he's divorced, but like do you also have kids? Like do you have roots yeah. in Detroit? There's lots of different things like that that might matter. But well, that was going to be my assume, that was going to be my second part is if you decide that it's t- like like that your comedy is at a level where you can move to one of these places and be um and take the next step then you then you have to decide which place to go and, I, and like I said I say you go where you have the most support where you have the most connections where because yeah. that's because then once you once you're in the game that's what it's all about it's all about who you know which increases the chances of you getting opportunities to take you to the next step career wise um, but this ain't like you said. This is a lonely game, man. Are you willing? Are you willing to risk not? Because because here's the other thing too. Ain't no motherfucking guarantees. You can be the funniest motherfucker that ever walked the earth, and it don't mean you gonna make it. You know, or it, or, it, or it doesn't mean it's gonna happen quickly. Or it doesn't mean that somebody that has the power to change your life will see you once you blow their mind, and then the, and then your life will be different after that. That's not true. You know what I'm saying? You could be hungry, starving, living like a frat boy till you're 45 years old. And if you're willing to risk that, then go for it. If that if the job you at makes you want to blow your fucking brains out, I, I'm not with it. And, and, and you know you can survive from comedy because that's the best you can hope for. I mean, that's the best you can... <clears throat> if you can survive from comedy and your job makes you miserable, then you should be. Then you should do comedy. You know what I'm saying? But if if if... If you're not already making money doing comedy or you don't see the potential of you living off comedy or or your or you have some ability to get some kind of side gig that you that's lucrative in in one of these places cuz cuz you got to survive my guy you have to survive cuz cuz believe me when I tell you I don't know your situation but you're you're competing the reason why most of entertainment sucks is because the vast majority of the decision makers are rich kids Rich white kids specifically, and because because when they go to one of these places, they have they have the free time to be creative. You know what I'm saying? When daddy paying your rent, or you got a grant, or you or you just independently wealthy, or you have a fucking allowance or an inheritance or whatever, and you ain't got to worry about surviving, 
You just got to be creative and social. You, the, you ha- the advantage you have is astronomical. When you can go to every single thing and submit to every single thing, it, you know, it, it, you're competing with those people. So, it, 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 you know, if you don't have the resources or the connections where you can survive and, and just get even your little bit of shit in, your little bit of shit off, you're, you're going to be at a, a severe disadvantage. Like, uh, I see a lot of people do that. They move to L.A. or they move to New York and they fall flat on their face, not because they aren't talented, but because they can't survive. They got to leave, you know, so it's 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 not a it's not a it's not a decision I can make. Like Rob said, it, without me actually being able to have a conversation with you and know the details of your shit, I don't know. I don't even know if you funny, my nigga. I have no idea because that's the number one thing. If you ain't funny, this is this question is moot. Stay in IT, my guy. Say, save up, you know, move to another country, change career or something like that. But I would I, I, I would hate because because so many people are focused on not being discouraging but i would hate to be the i would hate to tell you move right now move to new york and then the next time i see you i see your set and you fucking suck because then i just fucked your life <laughs> you know what i'm saying this ain't some shit you need to be into if you ain't really really you know even though what am i even saying because you don't even have to be that talented to be honest with you to be you know I, like like i got like i always say um, there's no simple answer to the questions you ask me. That's all it is. You know, there's there in 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 entertainment. You can either have a tremendous amount of talent or a complete lack of shame. Right? Here's here's shame. Here's talent. You can be one of the, one or the other, and fucking make it, or some mix some mixture of the two. You know, and so it's it's up to you. It's like if your if your talent ain't up here, your shame your lack of your shame got to be down here. And, and and it's 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 is that kind of thing. And so um uh yeah, but 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 feel free to hit me up. I, I mean I I'm willing to talk to you like directly. So like yeah, uh video message me or whatever. Um All right, one more one more Rob, we got time? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do one more. I need to I need to archive the ones I read. Um Coming to London. Yeah, mate. Hey Brian, love your work. Big fan of Netflix and stand-ups and haven't listened to your podcast for a few months now. Oh, have listened. Okay, see, that's what I get for trying to do my shitty... <laughs> I heard you might be in London with Joe in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that sounds very Australian. Okay, I'm going to stop doing it. I'm sorry, y'all. I, I, that, is, that is the thing I regret the most out of everything I've said on here. If I've heard that right, then it would be incredible to meet, grab a drink at the event. They always say that you shouldn't meet your your heroes, but if you've got a few minutes then would be a genuine pleasure to meet you. I'm a London tech entrepreneur, podcast host, speaker, author, former celebrity magician, etc. Wow. How are you how are you six things and I hate half of them? Here's my bio. <laughs> Cheers, mate, and hope we can connect. Well, um I mean that uh, Listen. It's certainly possible. I don't know how we would do that. You know, like, like if you mean, because what I normally do is, you know, I, um, Hans, Hans goes up, I go up, Tony goes up. And then when Joe is up, we walk around the arena sometimes. Um, but how would I possibly like meet you directly? You mean like leave the security people and just walk around London? I'm not doing that, my nigga. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. I don't know where's, where's the racist part. Where's the. Where's the hood? I, I'm not like I'm not gonna just be beating you somewhere in London. So, I mean, at the event, that's gonna be difficult because they're gonna put your cell phone in the bag. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe they don't do that in London. I don't know. Do they have yonder bags in London? Well, maybe Brian, like, the thing that you're Brian, yeah, the thing maybe. that you're missing. This guy's a magician. Oh, <laughs> so he can prove hey. himself. Right. He can prove himself at this event by showing up in the green room, and then you'll definitely yeah. give him some time. Well, well, yeah, yeah, so listen, if you can email me while I'm there, I will meet you in the event and have a beer. No no doubt about <laughs> it. Wait till I get off stage, hit me on the email. I got you, my nigga. I do. Cheers, mate. Oh, do they say my nigga in London? What do they say? The, the, bruv. Youth, the youth? The youth? Bruv. Bruv. Damn, you know what? And I just watched, I, I just binge watched Top Boy. I know they say something. Food? Food? I think food is drugs. That's that's not um, a person. Okay, 
I'm failing at uh, intercultural uh, relations. Big bun. All right, like let's read bun. something that's not about meeting me. Um, Brian, thanks for coming out to SF. It was a hella fun show. I attended the very last set, and fools were hella faded. You had started in on this one joke story about being on an escalator when some drunk ass old white lazy inter- oh lady interrupted you mid bit. You thoroughly flame roasted her ass, but we never got to hear the rest of it. I hope when you come back, you can finish it for us. Peace. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, man. Um, yeah, you, you'll see it on the on the special. Um, okay, something that's not. Um, okay, well, okay. Um, hey, Brian, it seems we're on the same page when it comes to dope shit. Hey, I like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm into dope shit. Recommendations from other people <clears throat> or their preferences often leave me disappointed and confused if I try them. You're at a higher percentage than most of my friends just from things on the pod you said you enjoyed. So thank you. Anyways, I think I have a little idea, but can you elaborate a little on your music preferences, i.e. what makes a song dope to you and some of your top artist albums, etc.? Um, have you seen the animated Witcher movie on Netflix? I'm not an expert when it comes to anime or if that's even considered anime, but curious what you think. I thought it was fire. Um, wow, okay. Um, I, I attached a picture to avoid any confusion, but have you had the Nerds Gummy Clusters? Not sure if you fucks with candy. I don't fucks with candy like that, and I have not had the Nerds Gummy Clusters. I have seen the animated Witcher shit. I also thought it was fire. And lastly, I assume your rap IQ is fairly vast, but have you heard of Ishdar? I have not. One of the younger rappers I used to be pretty excited about who definitely doesn't get his due. Until very recently, he was pretty consistent in terms of projects. If I had to pick I one to peep, maybe no feelings. You really should listen to the album Broken Hearts and Bankroll. I would be curious as what you think of it as a whole. Um, P.S. I spent a good 40 minutes trying to make a hyperlink with that Ishtar song, but it seems to be impossible on Android. So in case I failed, here it is. Well, thank you, man, for that very extensive email. Um... I, you know the answer to this is like long but um my favorite my favorite rapper in terms of lyrical ability of all time is black thought from the roots so that should give you some idea of uh where i am with that kind of shit um okay one last one Oh, this is an article. Have you seen this, Rob? This YouTube video? Maybe we'll do this on the next episode. Man sold fake guns and made $21,000 to prove it doesn't stop crime. I did watch this. Yeah, this oh, guy's a genius. Okay, so what so so break this down. This is from uh oh, Lucas Gamble. Oh, the homie. What's up, Luke? So so break it down for me. There was a gun buyback program and uh they were accepting not just uh manufactured guns but also like ghost guns and 3d printed guns <laughs> so this guy downloaded or created a 3d print file for like you know the lowest the the, the cheapest gun that you could manufacture something that would just barely fire bullets okay. and he printed a ton of them brought them all in and got twenty one thousand dollars in gun buyback uh wow what a champ funds what a yeah, champ genius so wait a minute, what does what does that make us rob I mean, you're you're more liberal than me, but we both we both we both love guns. Well, I, I don't love guns, but we both are advocates for people arming themselves. Yeah, because I don't trust the fucking government. Right. So what is that? What is that? What does that make you? And I don't and I don't trust cops either. So I don't I don't trust the government to protect me. I don't trust cops to protect me, and I definitely don't trust cops to protect people who don't look like me. So 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 what what, what does that make you then? Because that puts uh, you that as crazy. Because y'all don't even know the conversations me and Rob have off camera. Rob is the most left motherfucker I've ever known. Like if he did, if he wasn't married, this nigga would be in jail for like blowing up a Hummer dealership or something. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give me time. Give me time. You but know? but so 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 but your your advocacy for gun ownership puts you at direct odds with everyone on your side. Well, because I think at at base I'm like an anarchist or an anarcho syndicalist and uh and I believe in I think that's how, I think that's how we bonded anarcho syndicalism. Yeah. 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 Hey. That's a very specific ideology for two people cuz I didn't I didn't like put out an ad for Rob. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what I'm true. saying? He just he he was just the guy that was be producing the podcast. 
and, and he wasn't even going to say much. Like, it was, th- that was never part of the agreement. But one day he said some shit, and it was like, oh, well, now I need you to be saying stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it, and it, so, and it just so happened that we as- ascribe to the same political ideology. It, it, I, I'm, th- I'm pretty sure that you're more, um, more, more up on what it actually is or means. I, j- just me when I was skimming all the different ones, I was like, oh, I think this is the one that will work the best. You know, I think our distinction, the, or at least the biggest distinction. Is I think you are more, maybe more pessimistic yeah, about cynic. the potential for things to be different in the future. I believe that big changes, to even to the point maybe of revolution, are possible. But I think when the revolution comes, we're gonna need some motherfuckers who can shoot. Facts, and we and I, um and I can, I can shoot. Um, but yeah, thank Luke. This guy's a fucking champ. He's right. Um, thank you for sending me that video. I did. I would not have seen it otherwise. Fuck it. You know, actually, we just ran through a lot of the of the emails. Actually, I mean, there's yeah, still some. Good. There's still some we missed. There is a guy that, and I didn't mean to skip him because he hit me with a lot of um, a lot of the Blu-ray information. Or maybe that was a tweet. Yes. But but some someone hit me about like, um, get into like this 4K Blu-ray shit. Yeah, uh, shout out to Brayden. Yeah, Brayden. He, he, he sent us an email. He also had a recommendation for me to get an audio receiver, so I will look into that to fix the sound bar uh, issues. Yeah, and I um and 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 yeah, and I'm 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 getting into it. And then someone asked me recently, um, <clears throat> what's the difference? What is the advantage of having a Blu-ray player over just streaming? If well, like if 4K is 4K, and the the in um. And I didn't, I didn't have a good answer because I didn't understand it well enough. But, but I, but now I think I can give you a layman's answer to that question. And it's, it's that, um, yes, you can stream in 4K, but the maximum bit rate, which is the amount of data that goes to your television, um, in every second, the bit rate from streaming is about seven to eight times smaller than a Blu-ray player because the data has to be compressed in order to 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 fit, uh, to, in order to be uh, small enough to be streamed consistently. Which means, and that's and that's the maximum the maximum bit rate of like Netflix, which I, I think is the highest um, streaming uh, bit rate, is like seventy four uh, megabits per second, right, or something like that, or megabytes per second. I think it's usually megabits. But, so, um, so yeah, and I think like from a Blu-ray player, you can hit over seven hundred, eight hundred, right? So, so basically, the so my my point is, it, it doesn't matter what the exact numbers are. The point is that if you stream a four K signal, because because don't forget, your internet is not consistent. So, so, so at the max, Netflix will send you like seventy something megabits per second. So, so the that so. That 4K signal has to be compressed to be able to go at that rate, which means data is lost. The signal is not as clear. There's artifacts. There's things like that. and Or it has to be processed on the other end, which also adds in errors and artifacts and so on and so forth. And it's just not as high quality image. Whereas the, uh, the, the, the Blu-ray player going straight to your TV, the, the bit rate is only limited by the bandwidth of the HDMI cable. Right, which so you can get a re- you 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 don't lose any data. It's the difference between an MP3 and a CD. You know what I mean? Like you you can actually now that's not true anymore because now they can stream CD quality audio. Right, that's what title offers. Um, but it it didn't used to be the case. Whereas like if you were streaming an MP3, it almost definitely wasn't at at, at a, as high a quality. That's not really a good analogy either. But I guess it is. I guess it's it's, it's good enough. Um, so my point is. <clears throat> streaming is a streaming gives you less data that you can send per second and so things have to be taken out and usually the first thing to go is the sound some of the hdr specular highlights you know stuff like that and well you, you can you can see it if there's like a scene with a lot of dark areas in it you can see at the edge of where the light pool yeah. goes into black on something and listen i'm seeing here it's about 17 megabits per second is about what it tops out at oh 17 Whereas, okay and, and then yeah one seven and then 4k blu-ray disc is 128 megabits per second oh so it's several 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 times um more, yeah, more yeah. data and i'm telling you and i thought i wouldn't notice the difference 
Okay. And um, <laughs> some someone else also asked me like what my setup is. Um, I have a uh, I have a BDI cabinet. I have a Sony HT A seven thousand sound bar with the SW five subwoofer and the RS five rear speakers. I have a uh, and I have an eighty five inch uh, Z nine K um, as the TV acting as the center channel to the audio thing. And I know some of you fucking R slash home theater people are like, you gotta have a real fuck you. My shit sounds dope, man. I ain't coming to your house, so I don't give a fuck what your setup is. I like, I like it so far. Um, my my question to you enthusiasts is, and I put this on AVF forums, and I got a pretty decent answer. But um, should I let my? Oh, and I also have a uh, the Blu-ray player is a uh, the uh, Panasonic UB nine thousand. So <clears throat> should I let the so the UB nine thousand supposedly has all this legendary processing? As does the Sony Z9K. So which should I let? Should I turn off all the processing? Is that, is that even possible? Should I, which which device should I let do all most of the leg work? Should I let the, the the Blu-ray player do all the processing, or should I turn all that shit off and let the TV do all the process? And is, is that even possible? Can I just send a raw signal straight to the TV and let it process? I don't even know. Um, right now, everything's turned on on both things. <laughs> but um, but anyway, the point is the the difference in picture is incredible, and it's it's and it's not something that it's not something that I like see every single second. But it is something that was like, and don't get me wrong, there are downsides to the Blu-ray player because it it fucks up all the time, it, and it, and this is brand new, like it's literally like a couple weeks old, and it fucks it it you know, but it's also the the technology is a couple years old because no one really makes high end Blu-ray players anymore, um, and but but it. You know, it's eras where I gotta like take the disc out and put it back in, or turn it off and turn it back on, and shit like that. Um, and I also noticed when I let the UB nine thousand stream something, it the picture is awful. Only from when I play a disc, it's amazing, and I definitely see the the the, the errors that I get from streaming stuff. I don't get them from playing a Blu ray disc on the player. I don't. The picture is always stunning, as stunning as possible all the time, and there's never any drop off. In, in quality, like you will see sometimes when you're streaming, and the t and the TV is is right beside uh, the router, so it's you know there it, there's there's no reason for it to fucking suck sometimes, but it does because it's just the internet. Um, all right, that's enough for this week. Uh, I will be in London at the O2 Arena with Joe Rogan on October twenty something, and then I will uh, I'll also I just found out i'll be at caroline's in um in new york city in march so that'll be up on my website the day after this pops up uh, podcast comes out yeah go so go to brianswomscomedy.com to see any of my future tour dates and uh, and please don't forget to like and share uh the podcast all right i'll talk to you guys soon i'm gonna be doing that bullshit, 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 bullshit.